Hockey TikTok is back with an all new video. In today's episode of the podcast, I'm just doing another update on um, what's kind of happening around the league and uh, mostly for the Calgary Flames. That's my um, team that I follow and uh, cheer for the most. So um, kind of want to just uh, give you guys a little, uh, what day is it? Wednesday, Wednesday, midweek, a mid, midweek little update podcast episode to kind of just kind of give you a little snapshot on what's going on around this time of year. So uh, New York Rangers, Winnipeg Jets, and Calgary Flames. What do they have in common? Undefeated in regulation is the answer. That's right, guys. Calgary Flames are tied for second in the overall standings. Not in their division, not in the Western Conference, not in... uh, they're, I guess those are the only two things. They're tied for second overall in the entire league. The entire league, guys. They're literally second overall. Uh, just behind the Winnipeg Jets. Hats off to them, guys. 6-0 and to start the season for Winnipeg. Haven't lost a game yet. Meanwhile, Rangers, New York of, uh, Rangers of New York and the Calgary Flames have only lost one game so far and it was in overtime so they still got a point so 11 out of a possible 12 points who saw this coming not many people guys but i am a a big proponent of this team guys i literally said from the beginning i said flames are making the playoffs they're gonna do a lot better than um what we expected and i i don't know i don't know what else to say guys i knew it i knew it so uh, they played the Penguins last night. Um, their aging core of Sidney Crosby, of Guinea Malkin, Eric Carlson, Chris Letang. Um, they really poured on um, a lot of offense uh, through the second and third period. Um, Calgary had their young uh, rookie netminder, Dustin Wolf, in net. And it must be pretty. Uh, sort of like a welcome to the league type of moment for this guy to have to face the legendary Sidney Crosby, um, you know, not only throughout the entire night, but then later on, um, they pushed this game all the way into overtime into shootouts. And uh, it must be pretty nerve wracking going again, going up against the likes of somebody like Sidney Crosby of Genny Malkin in a shootout. So um, that was pretty cool uh, to see guys. Um, the MVP of uh, last night's game, in my opinion, though, was Rasmus Anderson. Um, this guy is playing like a man possessed lately. You know, he's been scoring goals and uh, he's been in and around it the entire um, season so far as well. So if he's not scoring, he's at least getting the chances and he's preventing the other team from scoring as well as a defenseman. I think Rasmus right now is tied for second in the entire NHL for points by a defenseman. The only one ahead of him is uh, Kale McCarr out of Colorado, who is just ridiculously uh, hot right now. I think uh, Kale actually leads the whole league for points overall as a defenseman. So Um, That's really nice to see. Uh, Blake Coleman was really great last night too. And um, who else? Kadri had an amazing uh, uh, game. He really pushed things in the third period to get that goal to make it, uh, to tie it up with the the empty net. The Flames actually fell behind in the game and then had to kind of tie it back up. Um, But either way, guys, I was just stoked. I was literally stoked to watch that game. I was pumped up. I was really excited. And uh, I'm so happy to see uh, the team doing well and uh, finishing, um, um, you know, out strong with uh, that victory in the shootout. And um, on top of that, guys, uh, the neighbors to the north there, Edmonton, they ended up losing their game as well. I think it was in overtime or something like that against uh, the Carolina Hurricanes. But um Looks a little bit uh, scary to start the season if you were in Edmonton right now because um, they still haven't seemed to found their their game after losing in the Stanley Cup Finals last year. You know, a lot of people talk about, um, you know, having that Stanley Cup hangover or even the Stanley Cup defeat hangover. That happens to a lot of teams, you know, if they go on a really long, deep playoff run, um, a lot of the times coming into the next season after a really long deep playoff run a lot of teams tend to struggle 
Um, and Edmonton is no exception to that. They literally um, seem to uh, not be able to, they're not, they're just not finding anything right now. I think uh, I heard a stat earlier today. I heard they were something like 30th in goals um, against. So they've allowed more goals than almost every other team in the league. And um, they're really not clicking on offense either. Now, will they figure it out eventually? Probably because they have guys like Connor McDavid. They have guys like Leon Dreisaitl and Zach Hyman that can, um, you know, really start cooking once they uh, they figure out their game. But as of right now, it doesn't seem like Edmonton is on uh, the right track. There, it doesn't seem like they're on the right page right now. So um, let's let's see what happens, guys. It'll be interesting to see what happens. I know I've got a lot of Oilers fans. Uh, who are um, really uh, haters of this channel because I'm such a Flames fanboy and I always go, uh, you know, so hard for my own team. But um, what can I say right now, guys? There's nothing else I can say. I mean, the the, the stats are right there. The standings are right there. Um, the Flames are, are doing well. The Oilers are doing bad. There's not much more else to say. Um, another really big surprise right now, in my opinion, is... Uh, the downfall of Nashville. So Nashville Predators, I thought they would be doing a lot better um, than they are. I predicted them to make a playoff push and uh, um, end up building off of uh, what happened to them last year. You know, they they ended up uh, making the playoffs um, sort of on the last couple of days of the regular season last year. And then they went out in the uh, offseason and they signed some really um, veteran uh, scoring players like uh, Stamkos and Marcia. So I thought that would bolster their team, but it seems like they're in shambles. But they did pick up a win last night, I think. I think they beat Boston and uh, actually got a shutout in that game. So maybe they're figuring things out and turning things around. But um, it's been surprising that they're out right now. Um, Nashville is out and Edmonton is out right now. And uh, Colorado is, is currently also on um, a skid. You know, if you look at how things um, figured in the Western Conference last season, um, those three teams, Nashville, Colorado, and Edmonton, um, were all playoff bound teams and currently are sitting on the outside looking in. So I don't know how it's going to finish, um, but out of those three teams, Nashville, Colorado, and Edmonton, uh, the one that I think is most likely to turn the season around and make things um, right and get back into the, the the mix again is probably Edmonton because um, they don't seem like uh, they they've been clicking and they have the the power of some really powerful players that can kind of turn their season around. Whereas in Colorado. I think their powerful players like McKinnon, McCarr, and Rantanen are already doing all that they can. So I don't really bet on anyone else being able to kind of step up and drag them into the playoffs. Meanwhile, Nashville, they just seem like they're completely out of it and lost right now, despite the win last night. So anyways, guys, I'm just doing a little quick... Uh, podcast update today um and uh if you're seeing this for the first time i um welcome you to the channel and i ask you to subscribe and get notified because uh that's the easiest way to kind of help support hockey tiktoki thank you guys have a great day